you probably arrived here after watching my video about the results of a year with an ultrasonic anti-valve system on my yacht Zephyr 4. I have been surprised by the number of views it generated and also the number and range of comments. Some suggesting that the ultrasonic thing was little more than snake oil. Others suggesting that my video wasn't a proper trial because I didn't have a comparison with another boat without the ultrasonic system. Though I was able to compare fouling on previous years when Zephyr 4 didn't have the ultrasonic system with the results at haul out this year after a year with the ultrasonic system fitted. Some people thought that making noises through the hull would cause upset to other marine life and some thought the result on Zephyr 4 was due to the anti-fouling paint and had little to do with the uh, ultrasonics. So this video is an attempt to explain what the ultrasonic waves are and how they produce anti-fouling effects. How the system is fitted to a boat, what boat construction is favourable to the system and what isn't, where to fit the transducers and how many you may need. I'll also look at the definition of it works and comparisons with anti-fouling paint. Firstly, what is ultrasonic sound? Basically, it is sound that is so high in frequency that the human ear is insensitive to it and cannot detect it. To give you some figures, bass sounds in music range from 25 hertz cycles per second to about 300 hertz. Mid-range sounds like speech range from 300 hertz to around 4,000 hertz or 4 kilohertz. High frequencies from musical instruments and harmonics range from 3 kilohertz to maybe 20 kilohertz. Most adults hearing tops out at about 12 to 15 kilohertz. However, children and some animals can often detect the higher frequencies. Ultrasonic frequencies used in antifouls systems range from 20 kilohertz to 45 kilohertz, so are inaudible to humans and most animals. Ultrasonics or ultrasound is used in all sorts of areas. Probably the most familiar is ultrasound scans of pregnant mums to check the foetus development. But it is also used in cleaning. In medicine it is used to clean instruments and containers and in engineering the ultrasound bath is frequently used to clean components, especially those with complicated shapes. It works by bombarding the component and creating microscopic bubbles on the surface. When they collapse or implode, they create a scrubbing action, which removes dirt from the surface. So, how does this work on the fouling on a boat's underwater hull? First, it's important to realise that your boat is floating in a soup of water and millions of marine organisms, bacteria, eggs, larvae, fragments of weed, etc. The minute you put it in the water, they are there, ready to make your hull a resting place and maybe a home. The biocide in your anti-fouling paint kills them off for a while until it wears out. Sailing regularly scrubs the exhausted antifoul off and exposes a fresh layer, but eventually it gives up and the marine wormies and weedies take over. But there is a sequence to the fouling. It starts with bacteria and other microorganisms attaching to your hull and creating a biofilm layer. That's slime to you and me. Algae attach to the slime and provide food for other organisms and develop into complex structures and weeds. This ecosystem provides an ideal food source and an environment for growth, including colonisation by barnacles formed from juvenile cyprid larvae floating free in the water around you. So the role of the ultrasonic system is to create the microscopic bubbles on the surface of your hull and as they collapse to literally destroy the bacteria and other microscopic organisms, preventing their direct attachment. 
Slime might be then created, but, but a lot of it will be dead microorganisms. But without the physical anchor points, it is easily washed away by the boat movement. The important thing about this sequence is to prevent the smallest marine organisms attaching to your hull. The ultrasound system is not good at removing organisms that have already physically attached. So fitting it halfway through a season, for example, may not be very effective. The ultrasonic anti-fouling uses purpose-made transducers to project the ultrasonic waves through the hull to the water outside. They are epoxied to the inside of the hull so that they make a good acoustic connection. The hull construction has an effect on the efficiency of the transfer of sound waves from the transducer to the outside of the hull. Basically, if it clangs when you bang it, it will be effective. Probably the best construction would be steel or aluminium. Solid fiberglass works okay. However, fiberglass with a core is less effective. The core absorbs the sound rather than transmitting it. The solution is to carve a hole through the core and glue the transducer to the outside skin. Maybe not a job for your average sailor and probably better performed with the boat out of the water. Similarly, wood is not a good transmitter of sound, so I'm afraid your trusty wooden ship is not really suitable. There is another consideration when placing the transducers. It is better if you can mount them away from ribs and reinforcement and on a flat area of the hull. Imagine you had a drum. If you hit it near the rim, it doesn't make much noise. Hitting it in the centre makes much more. On Zephyr 4, I have two transducers, one mounted to port, just forward of the keel, and one on starboard, just at the rear of the keel. Other systems have more transducers and mounting points are variable. Once the transducers have been fitted, then they are wired to a control unit which generates the ultrasonic bursts. The bursts vary in frequency and duration, so they are, they are effective against as wide a range as possible of marine organisms. I hope by now that you can see why the ultrasonic anti-fouling system needs to be active all the time. If it is off and some microscopic creepy manages to attach itself to your hull, it might not be removed when the system is re-energised. Most of these systems seem to consume around 7 watts. That's about half an amp from a 12 volt battery. I have a 100 watt solar panel. They never give you 100 watts though, do they? And this keeps mine going okay, even in the winter. There is some information on the internet about adverse effects of ultrasonic sounds on marine life but these seem very rare and in any case are probably less invasive than our current anti-fouling paint usage. Surely the propeller noise of all the boats and ships must be worse than the relatively insignificant sound of an ultrasonic anti-fouling system. When I created the Did It Work video, I didn't know how the ultrasonic waves would affect dolphins, for example. Recently, however, we sailed along the south coast of Brighton and on the way there we're met by a pod of dolphins who kept us company and entertained us for a good quarter of an hour. They don't appear to be affected by the ultrasonics, as you can see. We also met them two days later on our return and they were just as inquisitive and played for quite a while in our bow wave. I'm afraid if you have a boat then you are going to have some effect on the marine environment, but I don't think ultrasonic anti-fouling will be a significant factor. Let's talk about how well it works. Ultrasonic anti-fouling is not 100% effective, but then neither is anti-fouling paint. Since the uproar years ago when we used TBT paint, which was very effective, but not only killed the weed on your boat, but most of the things around too, anti-fouling paint has become less effective and it's not unusual now to need a mid-season scrub. So I would judge that most anti-fouling paint is about 50% effective. I would also suggest that the ultrasonic system could be about the same. Maybe better if you're able to use more transducers in optimum positions. On Zephyr 4 last year we stayed cleaner longer 
and the wash off at haul out this spring was quick and easy. So for me and Zephyr 4 it works sufficiently well and is worth the money and the effort. I know this has been a long video packed with facts. I hope you found it useful. Liking and subscribing helps my efforts with YouTube and I really appreciate your support. Now happy sailing now and take care. Thank you.